You are now watching a Lucky Penny Shop product feature. Hey, it's Lucky Penny Shop. Thanks for stopping by today. I do appreciate it. I'm excited because I am starting a new series, which I have talked about over the last year. I am titling it The Easy Bake Oven Gourmet Recipes of Famous Chefs. And I am going to start with recipe number one. And that's why I have two different ovens out here to kind of give you a little bit of the history. The book itself has a lot of history. The oven on the left is from 1993, and then the oven on the right is from 1963. Now the oven on the right is the first Easy Bake Oven. They did have one a little bit later with a different top section, which uh, has a different handle at the top. You see that on the top left of that oven? Well, we are doing the earliest one for a reason. Now the first recipe in the book, well, by the way, the book goes through quite a bit. Uh, let's just go to the table of contents. You have an introduction, a bright idea, still baking after all these years. Do try this at home. So it goes through all the famous chefs and their recipes. And then it goes through a lot of the history of the Easy Bake Oven with pictures. See this oven right here is the oven you see in this picture. And then uh, it just goes through uh, quite a bit, actually. Some advertisements. Again, a repeat of this oven. And then the popcorn popper, the freeze queen, other little sets, which I've done almost everything in this book. This one I'm not familiar with. This one I might have to find. And then care and cleaning, safety tips, easy does it. And here we go, the first recipe, which I have set. It is the Rick Bayless. It is the... Chile Chiles with roasted tomato salsa. It looks interesting. So what happens is they take each chef, they go over their history, what they've authored, if they're on television, and then a little story about them, which I'll read. But what I found interesting is the oven in the picture is the one that I showed you on the left. And then as I'm reading the story, he mentions a turquoise oven. So it could be this one or the one that was a few years later. I'm not sure, but we shall see. Let's read the story. It says, as the fourth generation in a family of restaurateurs and grocers, Rick Bayless was always comfortable in the kitchen, but frustrated that he wasn't allowed to do anything more than help. All that changed on his sixth birthday when his parents gave in and gave him an oven of his own, a turquoise colored easy bake oven. It was one of the first toys I remember really desperately wanting. The gift came with one provision. He was told it was off limits to his younger sister and he was to keep her from playing with it. He didn't. She burnt her hand, and a day later, his mother took away the oven. Bayless laments, I'm not sure I ever got over that. Well, now, checking his age, which I did not say, I don't want to publicly say his age, but when he was six, I can backtrack to when that oven, uh, the oven that came out when he was six. So I would have to do that. I might do that in the description area. I will not do that here. I want to get to the recipe, though. What I want to do is make this. And first it starts with the roasted tomato salsa. And then you do the second part of the recipe here. So let's start with this. Let me get all the ingredients. I'm going to move over to the mini kitchen because I think it'd be more fun for me to cook and get started there. But I'll use these ovens to uh, do a lot of the cooking. All right, so this is a two-part recipe. The second part of the recipe uses everything that was made in the salsa for the first part of the recipe. So it first calls for six slices of a ripe tomato, preferably plum. Two slices fresh jalapeno, we got that. Okay, and then two onion rings. I have an onion here. Half a clove of garlic. Gonna be a lot of chopping and prepping here. One tablespoon of water. Fresh chopped cilantro. Cider vinegar, we'll put that with the other liquid. And then salt, a pinch of salt. Okay, so that's everything that is required to make the salsa. So I'm gonna come back now. I'll move everything out of the way and we'll start uh, prepping and getting ready to move this to the Easy Bake Oven. Okay, so it needs six slices of tomato and three slices in each pan. So I'm gonna probably, since this is kind of a larger tomato, cut this in half. And then I'm going to then use those as my slices. So 
So I'm going to slice it this way and then I'll have some nice slices to put in the pan. I'm going to cut a few more just so I see how they lay in the pan and get it nice and tight in the pan area so I can get as much in there as possible. All right, now that says, uh, well, it says do that first, then cut the uh, jalapenos. Let's do that next. All right, so for the jalapeno chili, it says stemmed and cut in the quarter inch thick strips. Okay. Well, let's just cut it this way. There we go. Let's get these seeds out. And then cut in a quarter inch strips. So you're baking twice. So that's why I brought multiple ovens. And I have ovens in this kitchen as well too. Alright, so that's, uh, well let me cut a little bit more here. That's good. All right, let's move all this to my plate so that I can clean up my cutting boards. Okay, so that's the first part of the recipe. All right, so now it says I need to foil the baking pan. So let me grab another pan here. All right, I'm back. I had to get another pan. Now I have to make sure that this is just right because it needs to fit in the oven. So I'm gonna not leave any extra. I'll trim those off in just a second here. Got to grab a pair of scissors. They don't give you much room on the pans as far as fitting in to these ovens. So let me cut that. Now it doesn't say to, but I'm going to put just a little bit of oil in the bottom of each of these pans. There we go. That will definitely help. And then it says three tomatoes, lay like three tomato slices and all the jalapeno slices in an easy bake pan. Now it does this twice, so let's just put these in here. See, three fit. And the benefit of having multiple ovens is I can do, it says a half hour in the oven needing to warm up. So that's what I'm doing. Okay. Let's break this one in half. There we go. All right, let's get these in the ovens. All right, it says 30 minutes, so let's put the first pan in, and we'll see how this one does, and we can match it to the other one. Remember, always remember there's a little arrow, that's where you stop. Now this, uh, did the door go down? It did. And then the oven on the right, now that didn't have a pan pusher, but I could use this one. It usually take one pan. Once you get that pan in, it's in the cooking uh, section, you push another pan in, all the way through to get it out. So it says 30 minutes, so let's start it 
And then, uh, well, I'll come back in 30 minutes. Maybe I'll do a little more prep. Okay, moving right along. It's a half of clove, half of a clove of garlic. Peeled. It doesn't, doesn't say to chop it, to dice it or anything. So we're just gonna peel it. Okay. And then in regards to the onion, now I scaled down my onion slightly here. It says two onion rings. So an onion ring, I guess, depending on the size of the onion. So I'm gonna, let's do this. Let's cut it this way. Oh, okay. Move that back up here. Three second rule, three second rule. this in there. I have to readjust to this kitchen and get used to working in it again. It's been a while. And then let's just cut it a little bit more here. Let's get that in there. Okay. That's pretty good. Still think though it should get just a little oil. Let me do that. Okay. Now let's put that in the third oven. Okay, let's get that in this oven now. And then this in the second oven for another 30 minutes. So we've got some time. If you have one oven, you're looking at an hour and a half of the first step of baking. But since I have three ovens, it should uh, move this right along. All right, so we're gonna estimate here is a half of a tablespoon of chopped cilantro loosely packed. So let's just say I like cilantro, so we'll say that much. Yeah, it's probably been six months since I've worked in this kitchen. So I've got to get used to it again and working on a smaller scale. I'm in the kitchen a lot doing a lot of cooking, but not at this scale with the little tools and stuff. So I think that's more than enough, loosely packed. I like that. All right, let's uh, let's move right along. Actually, let me take you over to the ovens. They're both sizzling really nice. All right, so it's uh, got 12 minutes left. Let's take a quick look at this one. Now, this one is definitely not going to cook as good as the one on the right. That almost got stuck. All right, so it is starting to cook. It's steaming. There is some steam there. You could feel the heat. Let's move it back. Let's check this oven out. Now I have the benefit of having this pan pusher, which normally did not come with this oven. Let's see. Now look at that. The jalapenos have definitely shriveled down in size. There's no real color yet, but maybe in another 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Now it did say you might have to go here, let me read it to you so we're all on the same page. It did say, okay, push the pan through, then return the pan to the oven after you flip the tomatoes and then go for another 20 minutes or so. All right, so that's what I'm going to do. I will be back. Okay, just a little bit more to do here. It said cilantro leaves as a garnish. So I'm going to set this little garnish plate up. Okay, and then thinly sliced onion strips. This is just a topping. Ooh, everything's smelling really good. There's only maybe five minutes left.
Okay, I need one of these leaves sliced. I'll tell you what, let's do it this way. Roll that up again this way. How's that? Then if I cut lengthwise, ooh, there's an onion stuck. I'll get nice thin strips. We'll take that stem out. Okay, so all the prep is done now. It's just a matter of finishing the cooking and then blending it all. And of course, eventually, giving it a taste. All right, so the first uh, 30 minutes is up. Let me pull this one out. Now, technically this is, oh, look at that. That looks pretty roasted to me. I'm gonna say that one is done. The garlic looks done. Let me just check out if it's brown at all. Yeah, look at that. Okay, so I'm gonna say that one is done. So I'm just gonna leave it in the oven a little bit longer just so I can go over, grab the tomatoes. I think technically speaking, we're ready to go. Now you saw I was not using the official pan pusher that went with this one. This is the one that originally went with the oven. This one had a sticker on there that would change colors when the pan was cool enough to touch. Not something I need to work with today. All right, I'll be back now. Let's move over to the tomatoes. All right, this one through the little viewing window looks done. I would say we have nicely roasted tomatoes and jalapeno. Yes, very nice. Okay, so that one's done. That's on the cooling side now. And then let's just look at this one. Now we know the oven in the mini kitchen, that one works great. The turquoise one works great. This might be the weak link in all the ovens. Okay, well actually it looks pretty good. There's a little brown on the tip of the jalapeno and then the tomato, tomatoes look good, so I think we're ready. I'm gonna leave that one there. Everything's cooling. Well, let's move on. I think I'm gonna stay here now because I gotta use a food processor to chop this up. So let me move everything to this side. Okay, now I don't know how well it's gonna process with just a small amount, but that's what it says. So you see all my ingredients now are all laid out, ready to finalize this. Let me bring in this little chopper here. So it says, pulse the jalapeno. All right, let me green, oh, I can use this. The jalapeno. The tomatoes on this one, definitely 30 minutes, a little too much. I'm gonna use them anyway. Nothing wrong with a little crispiness. Texture. And then the onions and the garlic. Okay. And then a little pulse. Okay. Then take that out. Uh, small bowl without washing the processor. Okay, put that in a small bowl. All right, I was saying, you watch the chop shows, you see that they sometimes struggle with the food processor. They're all a little bit different on how they work. And see what I'm saying about being just a little tiny amount. The jalapenos did not chop up well. I'm guessing it's just because of the amount and the size. So I might have to just aid that. All right, then is... Coarsely puree the tomatoes. I think we got it this time. That's got to be this way, then this has got to be this way, then it's got to go back that way. You know what I might do? I might just put the jalapenos back in there now that there's more stuff and give this all a pulse together, right?
the chop feature. Okay, I think we're good. So now all that goes back at the bowl. Let's, uh, let me change the camera here. Okay. Ooh, that looks better. Okay, now it says add some water. Okay, uh -huh. and add to the bowl. Stir in enough water to give the salsa an easily spoonable consistency. Stir in the cilantro. All right. It's actually just a couple of the jalapeno stayed like full size. I think I'm gonna go a little bit more water. I think it's looking okay. No, if it's spoonable. I'm gonna go just a little bit more. There. Then the cilantro. We don't have to use all of it, it's a little bit more than calls for. You know, besides a couple jalapenos not breaking down, it looks pretty good. All right, let's move on to the next step. Now everything's prepped, we just gotta build it in a pan. Okay, so that's almost ready. I do need to add a little salt. So let's do that. And just a little splash of this. And then it says taste. We want to see if we got all the flavors. Mm -hmm. mm. All right, it's ready to go. It says put the salsa in the baking pan. I'm just going to use it all. It didn't say to put foil or anything. Okay, put the salsa, an epizote, in the baking pan. Add the water, one tablespoon of water. And bake this for five minutes. I'm going to use the other oven for that. That's quite a bit of water. Let's give that a little mixing. Okay, let me go put this in that oven in the mini kitchen. Okay, five minutes. Start the timer. All right, when that's done, I'm just gonna move it over to the other side and continue the process. Okay, a little more prep. It needs a, half, a quarter cup of tortilla chips broken into half inch pieces. Get in there. I would say generally speaking, everything's going okay. I'm getting, re, I'm getting used to my kitchen. Using three ovens is different too. Deciding if I'm going to use the mini food, mini size food, or regular size food. I think as I go along here, I should be able to, you know, perfect what I'm doing here. Cooking this way with the real food in mini scale sizes. Loosely packed. Okay, I think that's good. All right. Actually, how much time do we have? Less than a minute. That should be going off any second. 
Actually, let's just grab my phone. 21, 20 seconds. Okay. So let me grab it. Might as well just do it all here right now. Because it's got to go back in the oven. Timer's going to go. Three, two, one, stop. Okay. I'm just going to turn around and grab it from the other side. Okay. Now, remove the pan in the oven, add the chips, and then press it down. Add the chips. Oh, there's just a few more. Oh, I wanted to get this into here too as well. I saw this goodness of flavor. All right. Pat down lightly to make the mixture feel mixture level with the rim of the baking pan and return. Oh, put the cheese in and then pat it down. Okay, that should fit in. All right, head over to that oven and put it back in. Bake for another five minutes. Okay, here we go. Five more minutes. Start. All right, I'm going to clean up, get my table ready, and we will do final presentation. Okay, here we go. Taking it out of the oven. Now, basically, the chips should be softened down with all that water. And I should be able to mix this up. That looks pretty good. Let's just see. It is. Because it says, stir in the mixture well, blend it. Okay, stir the mixture well to blend evenly. It will fluff up at the same time. Exciting. We're going to get fluffing. It is. Look at that, it's fluffed up. Got a nice combo here with all the different uh, fresh ingredients. Fresh, everything is fresh. All right, now, well, I'll tell you what, let's serve this for each plate here and then we'll do it a couple different ways. We'll serve this here, look at that. Cheese has pulled. Here, maybe I can give you a side shot of the cheese. There you go. Let's just see. Here we go. Look at that. I have never made this before or had this before. I think I want a little more salsa on my side. That looks good. All right. I know. You got a little less, but... Now it says serve with a dollop of sour cream. Let me get another spoon here. Come on. All right, I'll give you more sour cream. Okay, let me see, stir the mixture. Top of the center with sour cream, then garnish with the onion strips and cilantro leaves. Yeah, 
I like the onion. Okay, then I thought maybe just a tiny bit, a tiny bit of a lime squeezed on top. I don't know if you like lime, so I will not give you lime. A little cola. All right, there it is. Generally speaking, I say it came out really nice. Let's move this now. I'm done mixing. And now it is time to taste. Let me hold it up to the camera for you. Little sour cream, little salsa, and a chip, which I can't grab. I'm gonna have to use my fingers on this one. There we go. There's a taste of everything. Mm-hmm. Very nice. It's almost like a nacho, a blended nacho. That's what I would call it. The chips are soft. Very tasty. I do like the little kick of lime. Although not in his recipe. Generally speaking, it's a good addition. Well, there you go. It's the first one. Sort of get my feet wet. So what I need you to do now is I'm going to put all the social medias for Rick in the description area. So Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok. I'll list them there. I need you to share this if you can. It would really help. And use the at or the particular sign for him so that maybe he'll get it. Maybe he'll pick it up. I'm not sure. Either way, it was a uh, welcome back to the kitchen. Get my uh, systems in order and everything set to go with the next recipe. And uh, this one was excellent. And thanks for watching, everybody. Later. If you're looking for the item you just saw in the video, click here. Watch more videos by clicking here. Don't forget to share on social media and give a thumbs up. Hey, LPS Dave. What's up, Butch? Make sure they don't forget to subscribe. Oh, yeah. Please click here to subscribe to Lucky Penny Shop. And always remember when you see a lucky penny, pick it up.